Hi, my name is Mary Shannon and I'd like to introduce you to the AIDS Memorial Quilt, um, the Irish one. Uh, we started working on it in uh, 1990 uh, when a friend of ours, a great friend of ours died and at the same time we heard about the American Names Project and we decided we'd make one and that's our first one there and it's his first one that the full name was on it because his mum and dad spoke about openly what was wrong with him. But uh, what we'd done was we started a workshop in the Dublin AIDS Alliance in Parnell Street and families and friends would come in and we would all work together on the different panels. A panel is six foot by three foot, the size of an average grave. And then when you put them all together, they become a quilt, which is 12 foot by 12 foot. It's gone all over the world now at this stage, but um, it's a beautiful way of remembering your loved one because there was an awful lot of family. At that time, the stigma to HIV and AIDS was so bad that families couldn't talk about what their loved one had died of. Uh, they'd say cancer or a heart attack or something like that, and they couldn't grieve. But by coming in to work in the workshops, it was a great way for them to grieve. And it wasn't all doom and gloom now. We used to have great laughs and the big tears and the whole lot, but um, mostly, by the time they'd finished working on their panels, they would start keep coming into us and giving us a hand with other ones. Joe's one, that, that one there for Joe, um, each panel will tell a story about the person. And what we, wanted, what we wanted to do was, we wanted to use material or clothes, anything at all connected to the person we use. All his friends, we all got together and we gave them all a letter out of his name to make. There's a £20 note there, well, a, a photocopy of a £20 note. And on a Saturday night, Joe would get ready to would be up in the room to get getting ready to go out, you know, for, for a night. Wouldn't have a penny in his pocket and he'd say to Orla, his, his niece, go down and ask your nanny for a loan of 20 quid for me. So this is how we put that 20 quid on it. And his mum always had a bottle of something in the house, you know, in case visitors would come. But uh, Jo knew where she had it hid. So uh, he, used to, he used to take the sup out of the, the bottle every week. And it was one time she went to pour out a drink for friends of hers that was up and there was nothing, only water in the bottle. So, but he was, he was a great, he was a real character. Um, also, there's a few things, the few things in there, letters and notes that were written by other friends. Uh, there's a photograph of, of him. The little teddy up in the top, my young lad put that on it, my youngest fella, because Joe used to babysit for me when my kids were small. And uh, I made the fan. And the reason I'd done a fan is, um, do you know the way the fan has a lot of different languages and different sayings in it? And I'd done that for him because Joe was such a character. You never knew what he was going to do or say or anything else. And that's how I'd done that. Um, the, uh, he, was, he would dress up. Oh, God, he used to dress up like nobody's business. And he'd uh, go out modelling for you. But um, the dolphin is there because the dolphin is free. And we've, oh, we put the dolphin there. Joe is free now of all pain, so that's... <laughs> I looked after Grace for five years before she died. Um, Grace had three children, two boys and a girl, and Paul, her husband, they, they looked after the whole lot of them. But um, when Grace died, the kids, we gave them all um, pieces of material. The, um, the three photo the th three things on the bottom of the quilt, they, we gave the kids those bits of material and got them to make, do a picture for their mammy, on, and so that's what they done. Um, Grace also made a film called Cos Common Threads, which was about people who were HIV positive. And they were all Irish people and they were, all in they were interviewed on it. And that's how we have that film. But when Grace got sick first and uh, the neighbours wanted to do a collection for her and she said, I don't want to go to Lourdes, I've no you know, belief in Lourdes and everything else. She wants to go to Paris. So that's how the Eiffel Tower is there. So her sister went to Paris with her and her sister made that Eiffel Tower there in the corner. She also done a, a book, she worked with the, the, um, the nurses and the social workers up in James, James's and in Our, La in Our Lady's Hospital and uh, done uh, that book was Kira's story. It's just, it was to help children, you know, who had their, fa their parents and not in hospital and, you know, to help them go in. And, and an awful lot of children at that time were born with HIV. 
you know, and that's how it was. They were th that kind of helped them to get through going to the hospitals and all. Paul, her husband, that was Grace's tracksuit that her name is done in, and uh, Paul, I done the the Grace, and then Paul done her husband done the the white with Fitzgerald, and Grace died in 1991. There's those little things. They see the the little things on the bottom, the little badges. Grace used to have those, and they, they had, we made a bedroom downstairs in the sitting room, and um, she had these on the curtain. And in the morning, she used to, when kids would come down, they'd have moved. She used to move them during the night. She'd say they were talking to her during the night. They kept her company. And that's a, pho a photograph of Grace as well. But um, the cigarettes and the ashtray, she smoked Carol cigarettes. And everywhere that she went, those cigarettes went with her. We even went up to Mary Robinson, to the to Arson Uke there on. And she, somebody told her she wasn't allowed to smoke. And she said, well, I'm not going then. That was it. But Mary Robinson actually carried the cigarettes in for her. So she did. She said, come on, it's all. She was brilliant with them that day. And uh, that's how Paul put a cigarette. You see the cigarette burn? Because everything she possessed, bed clothes, clothes her own clothes, and everything had a cigarette burn in it. The photograph on the t-shirt, that was her t-shirt as well, that uh, drawing on the t-shirt, Paul had a, that tattooed on his arm, that was a tattoo he had on his arm and they were her own jeans and I used to love when she was going to the hospital we'd do her up because they were the only jeans then that fit, that fit her. So we used to, um, we used to, I used to love dressing her up and that's, that's how those jeans and now in that bum bag is her cigarettes and her lighter and it's still in it. The whole thing tells a story about the person, you know. This one here about Brian. Um, Brian's partner's name was Brian as well, but they were, they were in, in England. But um, Brian, this Brian here was from Cork. And when, um, when they used to come home, they, uh, they used to, uh, camp in the front garden, the aunt had a big huge garden, she used to camp, they used to camp in the front garden, so that's why the, the and that's the way the front of the, the middle of the garden was, you know, with a star in it. Um, the aunt used to make him sandwiches, <laughs> it was always cheese sandwiches, so that's the aunt made that cheese, it's knitted cheese sandwich. They, um, they used to collect um, uh, miniature steam engines, you know, so that's how that was, and I was just telling, telling Jude there, they, Due in in um, Russia, they couldn't get um, they couldn't afford to buy Levi jeans. So the lads used to bring over, you know, the, the obviously these were trolley dollies. They were always in around the world. They used to bring over the jeans. Now he said the jeans used to be in ribbons when they'd get there, but um, the lads used to love the the Levi jeans. So they used to swap the the jeans for the the, the badges for the jeans. So that's how those badges are there. Uh, he was also, Brian was in the, he was into weightlifting and that. The, um, that's the red eye, that's what they used to work on. This one here, Michael's, that, um, he designed that himself. And two friends of his, used to, they were English, they used to come, ho come over every so often. They, these made them, were making it for him. And uh, they, um, they used to come over every so often and he'd tell them, what he wanted on it. The dolphins, the two dolphins down there, again, they signify freedom. He's free from all pain now. They, he used to love, he used to love um, going for walks in the forest. So hence the tree there. Um, loved having a game of cards on a Saturday night. The, um, the, and the rain, you know, when he go, wherever it was they used to walk in England, that's exactly what it looked like. There was mountains and the whole lot in the background. But when he died, they finished it off. And they, like it was, that traveled back and forth to England, got over the, over the couple of years, you know, back and forth every so often over. And, and then they eventually came over and at our memorial service, then they handed it over to, to us on the, in the quilt. That one there was for the lighthouse in, it, a chap went, uh, went into the lighthouse to visit someone. I met this chap, Rich, Rick, Ricky, and he had nobody and uh, he visited him for a while and then went in one day and Ricky was dead. So that's how he made that one. There's a lot of them that people would come in and ask us to make a panel for their, f for their family, but wouldn't give us any information.
So you kind of had to use your own imagination and everything else on what to do and what to put on it, you know, that kind of way. Christine, her daughter just came into us and asked us, would we make one? Her mum had died. But it gave us no information, only her mum's name was Christine. So we had to just, you know, she just wanted our mum remembered. Because they're a beautiful way of remembering somebody. Do you know, like, it's there and their story and the whole lot is there. But we have, um, we used to do a memorial service every year on around Irish AIDS Day and that. And uh, the, um, what we would do is, the people who'd be making, we'd ha have that in our, our set in our minds for to have the quilts handed over and that. Now it was a big, big thing. It was an interdenominational service, so we had everybody was covered in it. And what we would do is we had an opening ceremony and a closing ceremony there because um, there is an official closing ceremony and opening ceremony with the quilts which started off in America. But uh, people would come along and all the names would be called out. We'd have the quilts hanging each side of the, the church. And as the names were being called out, the, the quilts would be dropped. And then at the end of that, the people would come up and they would hand over the quilts to us. And we would bring them down then and add them to whatever was on the, on the floor, the ones that wouldn't have been finished. And it was a beautiful service. And it's such a pity that it all stopped. But please God, this year we're hoping to start it off again, yeah. But um, it's a lovely way, I, to me it's a lovely way of remembering, remembering somebody and, you know, forgiving people, because people would be so embarrassed, they wouldn't tell, and it was awful on families, you know, where the, their son and daughter died and they're left minding their children and everything else, you know. So many children brought up by their grannies and granddads. That's one for Freddie Mercury. We done that ourselves in, in the office, just in remembrance. This one here was made for, uh, Cherry Orchard had a unit, Unit 3, for, it was a respite area for people with HIV. And um, that, the lads out of that made that one. And uh, Nicky up there, the top, he used to do, he used to work in the office, he was a volunteer, and, but he used to look after the, the goldfish, so that's how the goldfish bowl is there. And he loved his, his, um, Aaron Cardigan and his Aaron Jumper. So, so you can see, you can take that one there was made by Barbara, uh, by Barbara for David. And that's the last time she remembers being with him. She was, stand, she was standing looking down at the Hapley Bridge. And that's how she, she, she got that done. They were great in the, um, they were great in the College of Art and Designs up in Thomas Street. They used to do all these, this work for us. Yeah, they were very good, the students there. But uh, yeah, everything tells a story and they, it brings it all to life, do you know, that kind of way, yeah.